Today we're going to take a look at creating your first SPFX, SharePoint Framework, web part. Here we have the Microsoft article, which goes through a lot of different steps. And on this screen, I've created a new empty folder called SPFX. As part of the, as part of the setting up your development environment, there's a lot of NPM install steps. You'll want to install Yeoman, you want to install Gulp, and also the Microsoft generator for SharePoint. So I've already completed those steps, and we can get right into the project of making an empty directory and running the yo at Microsoft slash SharePoint generator. Here we can see the Yeoman prompt. We give our solution a name. Do we want to do 2016 onward or SharePoint online only? We'll use the current folder, default name and description, no JavaScript framework. This will let Yeoman go ahead and put the scaffolding down of the folders and files needed to start a blank project. With our project successfully created, we see a confirmation message that congratulations, SPFX is created, run gulp serve to play with it. So let's copy that command, gulp serve. And before we run it, checking our article, there is an extra step that can help it is gulp trust dev cert. And what this will do is go ahead and add the HTTPS certificate as trusted to the local machine and help us with the preview website. So with that step complete, now we can go ahead and run gulp serve. On the console, we see a number of messages about the website being prepared and built. Now we have our SharePoint Workbench up and running. This is a website that's running on localhost, port number 4321, and that gives us a way to preview the work that we're doing. And it's really nice. It comes with the SharePoint branding and kind of simplistic layout, but it gives us that, that look and feel that our end users are going to have. Because the Workbench runs locally, there's no need for a SharePoint virtual machine or Office 365 tenant. You can run this localhost on your laptop as a developer and do anything that you need. If we click the plus icon in the top center of the screen, you can add a web part. And here we see our Hello World web part. That's the default created with a new project. And over here we have the description field. We can change that to something different. And we can see the text rendering on the body of the page to match. So here you can add more properties and various things to editing your web part experience. And go ahead and hit the X in the corner, close that down, potentially add two different web parts, changing them to have different values. So there's some state management occurring where the, the third web part has different text than the first two, and each one is run as its own instance. So that's some, something we can test. But that's the user experience. You also have the mobile preview where it shows a mobile layout, portrait, and landscape along with a tablet view, and then of course the desktop default view. So there's a lot of great things that we can do between edit and preview mode, turning off the edit experience for the screen, and then over on the code side, we can open up our project and look at the source files. Here I have Visual Studio Code, we're taking a look at the source files. The most important part is going to be the SRC folder, which is the source code for your project, and the TS file, which is the logic that renders for your web part. And here you can see the class base client side web part. That's what we're extending with our Hello World web part. We can import third party modules to get more functionality. Here's the rendering method, which runs to go ahead and render the web part, and all of the HTML that's coming as part of that for the user experience. Other things that you'll want to notice are the data version, where you can parse out the version of the web part, and here's the property pane configuration. Here we have one group, and we have a single field description, and there's a label that's being provided for it. So this is where we would come in and we would add more properties for the web part editing panel to go ahead and populate this with more fine-tuned settings people can use. <clears throat> so that's the Hello World web part, our starting point. Over here, under node modules, you can see all the third-party components that were brought in. Lib has a, a little bit about the CSS and maybe some of the JavaScript. This is what gets deployed into the workbench. 
You really don't have to worry about that particular folder. Disk, same thing, but this is going to be distribution for installing to SharePoint Online or SharePoint 16. Config is interesting. This can be helpful. So there's a config folder in config.json, and you may need to work with the externals attribute. This is where you can reference a CDN for things like jQuery and Angular and other JavaScript plugins to reference those external URLs to tell SharePoint Framework we plan on using them and have them be a part of our build process. You want to include them here and then also go leverage them on your TypeScript file, Hello Web Part TS, when you get over to that point. So that's an introduction to making your first web part. Of course, we have the localhost loopback. We have Gulp Serve running. We use the Yeoman generator to start a new project and Visual Studio Code to walk through the template. Thanks for watching.